Welcome to the second last XW video. I've got to do housework or a few repairs around the house before I continue work on the car. So welcome. Sorry about the spelling error in the last thing, I only saw it after I started adding it. But one of the things I'm never going to say at the end of each video is the direction I'm going to go next because I'm always wrong. Now, in the, at the end of the last video, I said we were going to concentrate mainly on interior, and I haven't been able to. I've done little bits and pieces here and there, but a lot of things haven't gone right, and I haven't been happy with them, so there's not much point filming something that's absolute rubbish. So, I've gone off on different tangents. Um, bits and pieces have come up reasonably cheaply, so I've grabbed them while I had the opportunity to and put them on, which I wasn't intending to do to the last one. Um, I'm happy with the car. I'm looking at it now. It's looking really, really good. But um, what I said I'd concentrate on isn't, isn't the case. Now, for some scenes, I've used this camera I'm using now wasn't available, and so I use my phone where the picture's nice and clear. It's a bit juddery, but the audio sucks. Uh, so I've written little apologies, and hopefully that's not too much of a bad thing. The other thing I've done is I haven't spent some time that I would have liked to on articles such as the heater box. You can spend 20 minutes on a video restoring a heater box. I've only spent probably five, and so there's been some... Um, some areas of fiberglassing, that sort of thing, that I haven't included. Charlie's just walking now. Hi. Hi, how are you? So, Very well. Do you have <laughs> some cigarettes? I haven't got cigarettes. I'm just joking. <laughs> so, hang on, you've, lost, you've stuffed me. Oh, hang on. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I had it all planned. Um, <laughs> shoot. Anyway, enjoy. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> you bastard. <laughs> right, I want to take the heater box today. Um, I've not pulled one of these apart on these on this model, but I've done other ones and they're bound to be fairly similar. But the first thing we need to do before we touch it, hang on a second, I'm just going to turn my phone on. Let's get some photos. Just so we know exactly just so we know exactly which way clamps are going, how the hose are, how the uh, taps fitted, also the routing of these under the clips. I'm just going to take a couple of photographs. And then, of course, I want to dust it off because it's been sitting around in the garage for a long time. It doesn't mean the car for traditionally all the parts I pulled out. It's been 18 months that it's been apart. I've had the car nearly two years. So we'll just give it a good dust off. It's got a, like a big wow in it there and it's broken that sort of fibrous stuff. Oops. And you can see that there underneath those wires. It's cracked along there. Now these are very, very brittle, um, and, I, and you can buy reconditioned ones for, I think they're advertised for about $750 and there's no way in a pink fit I'm doing that, I'll just fix up the one I've got. Now the coolant that came out of this 6 looked almost drinkable, it was that clean, and as far as I'm aware none of this leaked, I don't think the core leaked, um, and the heater tap doesn't look to have anywhere. It just means I don't have to sort of tug on it and twist it. Um, to get it off that union, because if you do that, you're probably going to break some of the soldered joints against the core. It's hitting that clamp, that clamp's a pain. There we go. And so we can assemble, I can use that as a template for the new uh, tap at length, and I know I can just slide it on without any issue at all. So we can just knock these out. Grab it with some needle nose pliers and just pull it off. Got the um there we go. Okie dokie. So there's our box. There's the core there. We have our heater fan, this is two speed, so it uses a resistor, so if that breaks, you've only got really flat out and stop. So um that all looks in really good nick actually. That's not bad at all. Easy to clean up. So I'll put that to the side. I'll have a look at this. And when we pull a heater core, what we're looking for is any visible signs of leaks. And this one looks really good. So, well, it's dropped a bit of coolant already. So I'm going to take all this foam off because it's rotted. And we're looking for any green oxidization around the copper, or around the brass I should say. And that looks awesome. So I'm going to take this to a radiator specialist 
um, just to get it pressure tested and then I know hello dear and then I know that it's kosher but that looks really really good I'm happy with that uh, but one thing that's quite interesting is this is dated 20th of August 1970 and this car is a September 69 car so that looks like it may have been replaced in the past and when you're restoring a car you often keep some off cuts and bits and pieces that come with materials that you don't use and this is the uh, sort of thing I'm talking about this is the uh, frame if you like for the taillight gaskets and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these it's a nice dense foam and adhere it inside there so I'll just cut the, that out and that's a nice thick dense foam that I can use um, to seal that flap and also I picked up a set of very manky looking uh, very manky aren't they XY buckets well they're not XY they could be Fairlane as well I'm not really sure no, nah, it's just because they're um, it's just because they're sort of chunky, but they they need reconditioning. But they're reclining, and I think they're Fairlane ones. But look at it, doesn't matter. They're all going to be stripped down anyway. Um, and these are stupid money. So if you're restoring one of these cars, you have to get hold of these very very quickly early on the piece. And I was sort of lucky. Ray looked after me on the price of these. I saw a set of these going for seven hundred dollars on eBay recently, um, and Ray really looked after me, so I'm wrapped with that. This old EL stopped dead in its tracks with my son and I in the car. Fortunately, we were just around the corner in Ringwood. And I replaced the coil and it's right down under there. It's a hell of a job. But apparently, these cracks, there's a crack along there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but... And also along the casing there, toward the, the windings in there. Apparently, that's the cause. 60 bucks for a new Bosch coil. And hopefully, it doesn't fold again, but... Um, you're supposed to apparently do the distributor as well and a new distributor is about $200 from person and that's with a module and everything on it but I haven't done that yet I'll just suck it and see but I'm a bit gun shy to drive it anywhere or I might get caught up so I'm probably going to end up doing the distributor as well for the sake of observation this six cylinder is a lot harder to work on than the old fashioned V8 getting there isn't it the front's almost finished now I've just got to put this uh, this trim along here bonnet trim on and the front bumper I haven't got the bumper yet and also the wiper blades need to go on I haven't got those there's another view of the seats I bought and um, got to start working on those they're going to be a pain to do uh, the back seat the cushion I was talking about these creases are coming out very slowly but of course it's all sort of floppy and saggy there so I'm going to have to repad that as well so working on that and so far she's looking pretty good and got the boot lid on now and the boot lid of course is like the bonnet it's all orange, orange peely it's not uh, sorted out yet and of course there's the interior ignore that cushion but um, but that's all getting there I've just got to um, sort out the seal the seal's sitting up here a little bit and it's very very tight on the seal so I'll have to put the lock on I'll do that in a moment but we're getting this lovely well I've painted all these rims up I've got this one here as the spare the rest of them are all done the small centre ones I've just got to get ready to fit all these now and my son wouldn't come in today so I'm going to have to fit them myself so there's no one here to film it good that's in excellent That was the tie, not me. You want this yellow spot over where the valve is. Whoa, it always gives me a fright, that. It's when the, the tie pops out, which it has now, so that's cool. One more bit down the bottom there. Whoa, horrible noise. Oh, 
all done. Just through sitting around, it is so dirty. All this dust, it'd be overspray dust and um, just bog dust probably from doing from doing other repairs, but it's a bit better. These wheels look really gnarly, don't they? They're sort of some of the blue on them from the um, this sort of protective blue over the white wall. Wrong hubcap, but like everything on this car, there's a reason I chose it. Even if it is temporary. Well there it is, I've just thrown a bit of clear over it, just not too much, just to give it a sort of a nice clean satin finish. Um, the repair is fairly obvious, but at the end of the day it's, it's going to give it a bit more longevity. And I've also, when I was prep soling or solvent washing, I was careful not to damage that date, the 20th of April 1970, so I wanted to keep that intact. Sometimes rather than buying disposable brushes, it's easy just to spread it out with a bit of itself. Excess mastic seal and a bit of prep soil, solvent cleaner sort of stuff. Oh, we nearly finished the heater box. Got a new tap on. We've used that as a template and made the right uh, length hose there. I've got three meters of hose hanging out there. It's only half inch. That repair you can virtually not see. I mean, it, it is visible, but once you get that on, you know, it, it's turned out very successful. So I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So the plumbing in, I haven't got it connected to the engine yet because it's a different diameter. It's half inch as opposed to five eighths. And here is our lovely heater box. And we've got, where is it, the heater tap going there? That's cold, hot. And floor screen, and there's another one somewhere. Down there we've got the end. It's all working well. Cool, that works well. I'll put the inner in for now, just to get it off the uh, the bench, but I think we're pretty much finished in there now. But I'm also going to have to take it out again because I've got to put those wood grain bits on which I haven't got yet. Ah, uh, yeah, it was obviously the distributor. The coil didn't fix it, so here we am waiting for the RACV. Board, board, board. Overhead wires or fittings will cause death. Well, hopefully my stranded car doesn't cause death. Got another seat frame. This is the rear seat frame. I actually got it to take the springs out to put in mine, but this fits in brilliantly. It's got that radius there for the wheel arch. Um, and this seat is an XC Falcon 500 one. Um, 
Yeah, it is Falcon 500, I don't think. Well, it might be Femme, I'm not sure, but it's the the uh, XC and a half, the perforated material. So that would be one of the ones with the oval Ford badge at the front, not the Ford across the bonnet, F-O-R-D, if you know what I mean, like the early ones did. So this would be sort of late 77 to very early 79, I would think. But it's the same sort of shape as the XY one. Um, I'm going to try it. It fits in the car very, very well. So I'll, uh, I'll try it. So I'm just going to sort of go around and unpick all the padding just so I can see through the frame when it's in the car I'll put the, but that that's in good condition there's no something sounds loose so it's probably just where it's fixed in there but this is in good condition I'm just putting this over the top of the old ZD one or whatever it is XY one that radius is identical that's a more gradual radius there to the other one the other one's tighter and it's hitting the wheel arch here this one goes much flatter in this area here so it's giving an extra inch and three quarters or so clearance between there and there now there are some differences this seems to sit a bit lower than that one and it's also not as flat in this bottom area here although the center is so obviously there's a difference in the floor pan but the rest of the shape is absolutely perfect So I might try and cover this and see where it gets us. So I welded a couple of rods down here to catch down there. The same on this side. And the fit, there's a little bit of room actually. I probably should have moved those rods a bit further forward. But um, the other thing I'm going to do, it all sits well in this area here and also along the front there. It fits really, really well down there. You can see, I can't, the light's not very good in here. So I'm going to weld a foot under here just to bolster that side bit up there and the same on that side because the XC floor pan must come up at the edges a bit. So I'll do that and it should fit quite well. Very nice trees. The train! Look! A big train. Nice train. Cool. I'm putting these little badges back on, little Falcon badges. Um, it's going to look a bit more like a Fairmont, but it is a Falcon. It's always been a Falcon. It'll always be a Falcon. So I'm sort of putting these on. They're the original badges, but I couldn't be bothered. Um, Trying to get these things straight and putting Fairmont ones on because it isn't a Fairmont really. Cool. Got these little protrusions on the back that keep them straight. But um, the best way to clean these, oh, it's not working. The best way to clean these is uh, the teaspoon section of the dishwasher. There you go, FA. All that means I haven't done much lately. There we go, nice and pretty. That has had it. Oh, that's me. Well, that's going to have to be re rolled, I think. I'm still struggling with these seat covers not fitting. I bought some thin foam from Clark Rubber. I tried to get some from a motor trimmer in Bayswater and he said, no, go to Clark Rubber. So I went there and I'll also make sure I never see any business again. But anyway, um, and what I'm going to do, because the, the, the padding on the seat's really good and the springs are in good nick, but the sides have just fallen away a little bit. And I'm just going to put some panels in here underneath uh, just to bolster this side up a little bit. The same on the other side. Um, and hopefully then the cover fits a bit better. But at the moment, it's pretty, pretty average. Well, I've flipped the back down and we're still struggling with wrinkles along here. You can sort of manipulate it a bit and, and pull them out. This isn't clipped at the front, of course. I've got to do that in a minute. But it's basically fitting. Very basically fitting. I'll hit that with a hairdryer and sort of manipulate it a bit. But I'm just going to we'll swing it around. And we'll start attaching this and pulling it up. 
And um, one thing I'm using here, I'm using just netting clips from Bunnings, and there's a pack of 500, they're about $8 or so. They're the same sort of thing as C-clips or hog rings, if you like. The only difference is um, they're not sharp at the edges. They're actually blunt, but it doesn't matter. You can sort of get around that. So I'm just going to pull it around. Ooh, drop it. Do that again. Just going to pull it around, and you can sort of just lock it into place. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep going round. I'm well, swinging the seat around. That's still a bit loose there. I've got to pull that down a bit. And I've got plastic there, but it's been really, really problematic. And I'm still going around and clipping it down one bit at a time. Um, just checking out how it looks. And it's it's going to get there. It, it's going to get there. It's just not, just, not as, it's just not as good as I hoped, that's all. It's a bit of a pain in here, this. But... Certainly not that bad. And it's been off and on a couple of times. Um, now my brother had his Mustang done. He bought, um, well he bought a trim kit like this for his Mustang from the United States, a shop in I think it was one of the Mustang places in the United States. And the trimmer charged him $1,300 to fit it because he, pardon me, had the same problem. Now, a lot of the time they'll have to so there's problems with these. These are made off a pattern, and of course you don't know how good the pattern was to start with. But seats wear at a different rate. The padding wears at a different rate. Um, the seat springs sag at a different rate. You just don't know what you're going to get. So when you buy these, you've got to be prepared for them not to fit. Which I didn't take into consideration when I bought these ones. And I said in an earlier video, if they don't fit, it doesn't matter that much. It's, they're only 395 bucks. But now, of course, with the car almost complete, I'm really keen for it to look good, um, and I'm disappointed, I guess, but the other, Ray Kwan, who I bought the car from in Bayswater, he uses a bloke, and he charged a thousand dollars, I think, to do some for Ray, um, and really, budget-wise, I'm almost at the end of my tether, I mean, I think I'm up to twenty, twenty-four thousand um, now, and it's, I budgeted twenty-five. And with this car, before I got it home, um, when I was thinking of buying it, I thought, oh, if I do it as a six, Falcon 500 six cylinder, I'll sort of be looking at about $10,000, so all up I'll be in about 15. But changing it to a sort of a Fairmont um, V8 with all the gear I wanted was going to be about another 10, so I sort of budgeted 25. When you get a car and you put a budget on it, double it, basically, because it always blows out, but given that I've done all this myself, I haven't been paying anyone. I've managed to stay right on budget, and I sort of—I've done it a few times now. This sort of stuff, so I kind of knew where I was at. But um, it's still going to be over. I reckon 27, probably all finished off. Well, here it is, kind of almost done. Um, I reckon a bit of hair dry work, particularly around here. It's been packaged and it's all creased, and maybe um, just manipulate this a little bit around this side. I reckon it might be all right. I might just pull it down the back a bit more. Certainly not perfect, but I think it'll be all right. Another thing to keep in mind is when I first put these covers on, if you can see that's about equal, um, this cover here is completely over this way, so it's gonna come back, which means that isn't central. And these are the things you get with seat cover kits. They're just not perfect. So if you're, if you're chasing perfect or you're doing a concor restoration, what you'll need to do is go to a trimmer and get him to do it from scratch because this isn't going to cut it for you. Um, as disconcerting and disappointing as it is, that's just the reality of it. You get what you pay for, I guess. The other thing I'm doing, because I've had to unpick all these seeds or at least take the covers off again to redo them, is I've got this piece of plastic strip. I've just marked the edge of the seed and lined up where these pleats are. And I can transfer that onto the squad because this uh, was way out by about two inches on one side. In saying that though, it was actually stitched incorrectly. The, the panels here aren't the same as what's on the squad. Oh, here comes another train. Oh, it's stopping. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 
The other thing I want to mention is the contact adhesive you use. This is stuff from Burson's, the Permatex one, and it's really, really good. Uh, it actually sprays out in a sort of a, a zigzaggy look. And if you look at it, it comes off in strips like that, and it sort of stays on top of the fabric. There's some there, and it goes tacky, obviously, with the contact adhesive. But a lot of the ones you buy from other hardware stores, that sort of thing, um, are a very thin liquid and they just soak into fabric and they're no good. So that's the one. It's about $17 and it's reasonably, reasonably expensive but it works very, very well. Well, I've lined up this... Um, wires coming out. I've lined this up. I've taken it off again and lined it up with these two centre plates with the framework and it is just one effing disaster. I mean, seriously, nothing is fitting... I'm just going to try my best with it, see how it goes. You know, hold my breath, I guess. Well, I've got to pull this in to get rid of those wrinkles and so forth. And I put this here, and there's a slight discrepancy in the width. And it is crap, but it's a, well, it's a little bit less crap than it was, but it is still crap. Well, I've started on this uh, this bucket seat now. And uh, everything, it's obviously been left out in the weather, everything's all rusty and a bit manky and basically just a bit of CRC up under the thread. And I'm using a one inch spanner over a Phillips head like that to give me some leverage. But it's, when you undo things like this, you undo them a bit and uh, then, you, then you probably get stiff. So you have to sort of run it back over itself to spread the lubricant out a bit. And then you've got a bit more chance of getting it off. Because if these break inside, it's a pain in the neck. I pulled an X, some X, oh, no, we're getting stiff again. I pulled an XD seat apart, or oh, some seats apart years ago, and I kept the hardware, and it's in it's virtually the same. These bolts here are, I think they're 5 16 coarse, and they're, they all look the same. They're the same type of bolt, so I might just replace them and run a tap through these, um, you know, paint up the frames, make them all look nice before I put it back together. That Hessian's rotted. I'll replace that too. And the Hessian's there um, with little wires through it to stop the uh, seat foam chafing against the springs and falling apart all over the floor. So that does an important thing, that Hessian. But because it looks all manky, I'm not going to put that back in the car, obviously. Here we go, I've got it. And they're just absolutely knackered. Oh, it's got a, a washer behind it. But yeah, I think we'll we'll have to rebuild all of this before we can use any of it. But she's a mess. I'm not sure how to separate this squab and cushion. Um, the old the the XCs I think and XBs have a, a circlip on the back of this where that pivots on. And I'm not sure how this one comes apart. Someone might have to chime in and give me some advice. I'm wondering if you undo that and it's a long through bolt. I'm not I'm not certain. So I'm gonna. I'm going to leave this for now and um, concentrate on it in the next video. Here comes the towie. Awesome. See you soon. Oh, well now I can... I'm at home now so I can do a bit of work on the old XW. There we go. Um, I'm putting a bit of premium in. It's got five litres. This will make it ten. And I really want to get this video done. I've already got about half an hour's worth of footage, which is more than what I wanted. Which one goes there, I think. Here we go. Hey. Starts. The battery's a bit sus. Um, and I've also had uh, solenoid issues too with the starter hanging on. And one bloke thought it might be the um, might be the um, an earth problem with the ignition switch. This coil is temporarily wired. It's pretty messy. But I just want to have a bit of a look around. I'm also a bit nervous because I haven't got enough transmission fluid. It's right up on the dipstick, but I might have to get another um, container. So I can't leave it going for all that long. I'll give it another stab in the guts and see what happens. <laughs> Well, that's the first time this car's run 
or I should say this is the first time that engine's run since it was on the stand uh, quite a few months ago and it's noisy for a car that looks like this. You would think a car that had that appearance would be nice and quiet, but it has got that temporary exhaust on. Certainly no big deal for some, but it is to me. Uh, we finally have a nice running 5.8 litre Falcon. Now I did say this was the second last video, and there is going to be uh, probably an intermediate one with the interior, because the interior has been giving me all sorts of grief. Um, and yeah, look, I'm, I'm really not happy, but at the end of the day, I've ordered the carpets. Um, Knox trimmers ran out of the, the the saddle, classic saddle loop. I've got the back seat in, that looks fairly good. I'm pretty happy with that. But look, I know it's a very, very long video, and I'm sorry it's so long, but hang around. I've got a bit of a slideshow, some before and after shots, even though the thing's not finished. I really wanted the bumper bars on this one, because I've sent them out for chroming, and the guy keeps holding me up, which is why it's taken a few extra weeks to get this, uh, this episode out. Hang around and take a look at this. Well, here we are, the end of the second last video. So far I've seen a fairly major transformation from our humble, worn-out six-cylinder Falcon 500 to our lovely and almost restored classic. It's been a longish journey and it's thrown a couple of curveballs my way, yet never been anything of a major stress. In fact, it's been something of stress relief. You see, I'm a high school teacher and although it's a terrific job, it comes with a raft of red tape, so I come out here to forget about it for a while. I said in the first video I didn't want a GS or GT tribute car, just a nice clean white Falcon and that's pretty much what we have here. So the next video is all about finishing the car and quantifying the work performed. How will all of the cost and work carried out fare in the final product? There are bound to be teething issues that will need sorting. I'm just hopeful there aren't any major ones. I guess time will tell. I also mentioned in the last video that the final one will be some time off as there are some expensive items yet to be obtained. So until then, Thank you all very much for following this series of restoration videos and for the positive comments left. Until the final gig, thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Ta-da!